guys dan greer coming at you from why one of our buy but my buy one of our trucks and i gotta say something that logo right there that thing looks sweet anyways i um, wanted to take a few seconds to talk to you about what needs to be inside of your truck so we're going to open up this bad boy and just kind of get into it a little bit so you can see so one of the first things we need is our three red triangles there they are they're in a box they're even open one of the next things we need is our fire extinguisher. It needs to be mounted and secure. That bad boy is on the opposite side. If we look over there, we can see it. If we look close enough, hold on, let me see. Can you see it? Oh yeah, right behind that air hose, by them hats. Yeah, see it? Okay, last thing we need is some spare fuses. Make sure that you've got uh, several spare fuses in there, enough, uh, at least one for each of them that you've, that you've got, like each size. So if you got five amp, 10 amp, 20 amp, 30 amp, whatever, you wanna have at least one spare fuse for each side. Some of the other things you need to have in your truck are like all of your paperwork. So if you're hauling hazmat, you need to have you know an ERG guide, the emergency response guide. It needs to be in the driver's side door. Also, if you're uh, if if you're not hauling hazmat, just regular trucks, you need to have your insurance, your registration, your uh, IFTA. If you're crossing state lines, you got that license on you. And then uh, that's that's really about it for paperwork. You do want to make sure you got your license on you. You actually don't have to carry your med card anymore as long as you've submitted it to the state. And you have to submit it to the state to keep your CDL. So you want to make sure you, uh, when you renew it, carry it with you for 15 days, submit it to the state. And guess what? Hey, if you're one of our customers, we send it to the state for you. How awesome is that, right? One and done. That's our goal is to 100% be one and done all the time. So anyways, just wanted to, uh, sorry about that. Just wanted to take a couple seconds and talk to you guys about what needs to be in your trucks. Uh, you really don't need anything other than that. There is a few rules depending on what state you're in. So like Colorado says, and, and I just want to take a few seconds and debug this. I know this is going a little long, but Colorado says that you've got to have chains in your truck if you're on the I-70 corridor, pretty much between Denver and Grand Junction, even if the chain law is not in effect. Now, a lot of people take that and misconstrued it and twist it all over. And they're like, oh, you got to have chains on your truck if you run in Colorado. No. No, you only have to have them on your truck if you're running that I-70 corridor from September 1st through May 31st. If you're running anywhere else in the state, you don't have to have those chains in your truck. Just wanted to kind of debug that. I will say this though, it's probably a good idea to have a set of chains on your truck because if you don't and the chain law comes into effect, you got to pull over and park it until the chain law is off. You can't keep going just to be safe, um, just to go, right? You can't really get to a safe haven when the chain law is in effect. It's kind of crazy. Anyways, that's it, guys. That's all I got to say. That's all you got to have in your trucks. It's pretty simple. All right, hope you guys have a great day. We'll chat with you later.